iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Hi, my name is Jacob Yandura, and I'm a musical theater composer. My name is Rebecca Greer Molosic, and I am a lyricist and a book writer. We're currently working on a musical adaptation of Alexander Shiva's documentary, How to Dance in Ohio. Uh, it's about a group of young adults with autism who are learning how to transition into adulthood by preparing for their first spring formal dance. Uh, the project is very special to us um, since we are both from Ohio. Uh, in fact, uh, it takes place in Columbus, which is my hometown, and my little sister has autism. The themes in the show explore what is it like transitioning from childhood to adulthood? Did we ever fully transition into adulthood? And also, what is the importance of connecting socially? Since I discovered the documentary, the journey of development has been very serendipitous. Uh, we first started um, working on it and then mentioned uh, the project to our friend Ben Holtzman, um, who was actually working as Hal Prince's assistant at the time. Um, he and his producing partner, Sammy Lopez, were eager to um, work on a project from the ground up. And so the day before Prince of Broadway opened, on Broadway, uh, Hal had mentioned to Ben that he wanted his next project to be about autism. And uh, Ben then connected us with Hal, and suddenly my 10-year-old self was going crazy and freaking out because the Hal Prince wanted to direct uh, a musical that Rebecca and I were writing. Hal was epic. <laughs> Uh, he had an immense presence that made you want to show up. Um, you knew when he, when you entered his office, which was totally the Smithsonian for theater, um, that you were there to work and really work. Um, how was the ultimate dramaturg? He was very hands-on from the process from day one. Um, from the beginning, we discussed the metaphor of the show, which was the central idea that he would design the production around. Um, and that was his way in for all of his shows. Um, and since we were adapting uh, a documentary where there isn't much uh, central theatrical conflict, it was our job to create one. How had this depth of encyclopedic knowledge that was indispensable and unlike anything I've ever seen, he would say, oh, well, this is how we solve that problem in Follies, or this is where I got that inspiration for Cabaret. And he always had an answer for every story and structure question that we had. To be daring, he said, if you want to write musical theater, you have to create history. Um, and I remember before I even wrote a note for Ohio, um, he sat me down and he looked at me and his eyes were just ballooning out and he said, Jacob, be Bernstein! And, uh, I, you know, I, I knew what he meant, create something that we've never heard before. Um, so every day I remind myself of that. Working with Hal on this project helped me see the story in a three-dimensional way right from the beginning. I would hand him a new scene and he would go through and put his notes in, but also rewrite all my stage directions, adding every spotlight, every special, every piece of set design that he could already see in his mind would go on the page right from the start. And that was remarkable. It breathed life into the story that I've never experienced before, where I could see exactly where these characters would be moving and we created the world together around them. Rebecca and I met at NYU's Graduate Musical Theater Writing Program in 2009, um, and we quickly became really, really good friends. Um, since each student is paired randomly with a different collaborator on different projects, we actually weren't paired to the middle of the second semester. Um, and so we knew we admired each other's work. Um, and once we were finally paired together, we were like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, you are my person. Uh, and yeah, we were totally on the same vibe. 
About a year after we graduated, uh, we were commissioned by New York City Children's Theater to adapt Jerry Spinelli's young adult novel, Ringer, into a musical. Ringer tells the story of Palmer, a sensitive 10-year-old boy who feels pressured to participate in his town's annual pigeon hunt, where 5,000 pigeons are killed every year. This is based on real things that happen. When Palmer secretly befriends a pigeon, that part's not real, when Palmer secretly befriends a pigeon, he has to find the courage to stand up to the town uh, and get them to cancel the pigeon hunt. One of our favorite songs to write was Nobody Cares, uh, which is a song sung by Palmer's next door neighbor named Dorothy. She's just moved to this town from New York City. Uh, she's a child of divorce and she cares deeply. What she lacks in social graces, she makes up for in passion. Uh, when I was her age, I was part of the environmental club in my town and I marched in the parade and I wrote a lot of poems about dolphins stuck in oil spills. So I kind of felt like Dorothy was in my bones. I enjoyed uh, the challenge of writing a patter song that felt very much like uh, an anthem. Um, we set out to write a fun I am star moment for Dorothy, but then during the process we realized that the song had a larger responsibility. Um, we realized that, oh, this is sort of our mission statement as writers. Dorothy may be trying to um, get Palmer to advocate with her, but out of context, the song is really a warning call to our generation. Nobody cares about the oceans. No, 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 nobody cares, though they are 70% of the earth. Yeah, you've got whole new friends. Well, isn't that terrific? There's still a continent of garbage floating in the Pacific. Nobody cares about the ice caps. part of the process is before the process even begins. Um, I have many worries that I have to ignore. What if I don't hear the music? Um, what if I've never written in the style before? I know nothing about the style. Um, anything that basically says I can't do this. Um, I have to constantly ignore all those voices in my head um, and just take it bit by bit. Um, otherwise I'll just get really overwhelmed. I think getting to know your process is the hardest part of the process. I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been doing this long enough to where I can see the cycles of inspiration and I have my bag of tricks of how I get those creative juices flowing again. But it's really like being in a relationship. You know, when it's good, it's really good. And then there are times where you're like, process. Uh, but it really helps to have a partner. In uh, 2016, after the Pulse shooting and the looming election, there was so much chaos in our nation. Uh, Rebecca and I felt the need to write an anthem of solidarity uh, to comfort everyone. Jacob felt really compelled after the Pulse nightclub shooting, and I didn't really know what words were gonna be sufficient to put into this song. So I turned to other great 
poets and speakers who came before me and I landed on this quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that really stuck with me, which I'm going to read. Uh, I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. Um, I often say that I want my, my music to feel like a hug, and the song is very much that for me. And though these waters will not wash the past Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Yandura and Molosic. Also, our sheet music is available at newmusicaltheater.com. Thanks for watching, and everyone stay safe. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing.